This circuit implements triangle wave and square wave signal generator implemented using three op amps as shown here. We want to show that the output voltage is simply this triangle wave form with period T that is programmable and the parameters of a period that can adjust the period are just simply R and C in this circuit, the value of cap and resistor, and also the R1 and R2 in this part of the circuit. So how does this work and how can we quickly prove this formula. Okay, so let's just start from uh, this point that op amp number one is properly biased, let's say connected to just as a reference, 10 volt and minus 10 volt positive negative supply. This op amp is in positive feedback topology. And as a result of that, we have a comparator here. So this op amp one is operating like a comparator. What it does is it compares the voltage of negative input terminal and positive input terminal. The moment the voltage of negative terminal is less than positive terminal, it would say or indicate that by saying the output voltage jumps to maximum saturation voltage at the output of op amp 1, which is let's say here, V1, and V1 jumps to Vmax. And that Vmax or Vm is a value that is less than or equal to let's say 10 volt, the supply, positive supply voltage in this circuit. Otherwise, if the voltage at negative input terminal of op amp 1 is greater than voltage at positive input terminal, as a result, the way op amp indicates that as a comparator is it will shoot the V1 to negative, most negative saturation value, which is minus V max, which is greater than or equal to negative 10, which is the most negative voltage in this circuit. Okay, so with that in mind, for the comparator, then let's assume v1 is at minus vm here so let's assume that's the case as a starting point let's see what happens all right so i'm going to write it here uh, if so if if v1 is equal to minus vmax as a result of that a couple of things happen one because of this voltage division between these two resistors, R1 and R2, to, to the ground via v, from V1, we can compute V plus, or voltage at positive input terminal of op amp 1, just a simple voltage division. V plus is simply R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V1, which is Vmax, negative V1. So negative, negative Vmax, that's the V1. Okay, um, but we are saying that output voltage is at negative Vmax. What is the meaning of that? Take a look at the scenario. Uh, let me change the color. So the scenario says we get that at the output only when V negative has higher voltage than V positive. So I'm going to say this also indicates that. So two things, two things. V negative is greater than V positive. And that also means the case. Okay, um, so as a consequence, I'm going to use what I wrote, wrote above. So it means V now using these two together, I'm going to say it means V negative or op amp one, obviously, is greater than R2 over R1 plus R2 and times minus Vm. So minus Vm. Okay, um, this is my threshold. So this is the threshold that I need to track. But I know Vmax, because of this wire, is the same as Vout for up amp one. So therefore, what I'm learning here is Vout, in this case, should be greater than negative R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vmax. So this is my threshold. This is my threshold. Whatever happening at uh, the moment that this is violated, then the system will switch and uh, V1 will switch to plus Vm otherwise. So that's what's, what's going to happen as is written on top of the page. So why am I bothering this? Uh, because uh, take a look at this topology of inverting amplifier we have here. For this amplifier, assuming that it's properly biased, meaning that the plus minus 10 volt, for example, connected op amp in linear region with negative feedback, this op amp is 
benefiting from virtual short and uh, this op amp is just a simple inverting amplifier the gain of that is just negative r divided by r so for this last stage i have if this is v2 the output of the second op amp i can say v out over v2 is just minus r over r which is minus one so all i'm trying to do is rather than keeping this last op amp in place i'm going to remove it and instead of that i'm going to just put an indicator that the gain of is negative one the voltage gain from the in the v2 to v out so as a result what i'm trying to say is when we are at this uh, threshold whenever we get to that to this threshold at the beginning of operation um, all i'm trying to say is it's as if we have v2 which is the same as voltage of cap because this op amp 2 is also properly biased because of mutual short that says the positive input terminal of op amp 2 is equal to the negative input terminal of op amp 2 zero volt at positive appears as a mutual ground at negative as well so uh, you can see that we have zero volt on uh, on the left side of cap so v cap with this polarity that is shown effectively becomes equal to v2 so all i'm saying is E cap equal to V2. Okay, so uh, V2 equal to V cap equal to negative R2 over R1 plus R2 times V max. This is the starting moment of our circuit. So the moment that we are starting here, uh, let me show it here. The moment that we are starting, let's say here, as time equal to t0 as a reference point the square wave you see here is uh, what is at the v1 at the output of op amp 1 at the output of op amp 2 we are seeing uh, v2 which we know is equal to um, is equal to which we know v out is just simply negative v2 we just talked about it and there is this indicator there so i'm not going to mention that for now but v2 uh, start from time zero we will need to see what's going on but just bear in mind that we have initial voltage for cap so this is initial voltage for cap all right so for the capacitor i'm going to write a kcl here uh, so write kcl at negative terminal of op amp 2 and as a result i have to say i have to say that whatever current is going through this cap when it hits this node it should continue going to register because nothing can go or come out of the terminal of op amp input terminal because it has practically infinite input impedance so as a result of kcl or kirchhoff current law or law of preservation of current i of the resistor for op amp 2 is equal to i of the cap current of the resistor equal to the current of the cap so let me go back to let me go back to um the let's say my original color okay so i'm going to substitute for i of resistor as the zero minus v1 which v1 is negative vm so zero minus minus vm divide by and then we have uh, r equal to i see the current of the cap is c derivative of voltage of the cap so just playing with things around and vm is a constant of course i get um, vm over rc integral from zero to time t reference dt is equal to and i get uh, uh, integral dv which can be written as of course voltage of cap time t minus voltage of cap at time zero 
Okay, so what's the benefit of writing it this way? It is as simple as this. Uh, this portion becomes Vm over Rc times time. The other portion becomes voltage of cap, which is the target that I want to find, and minus voltage of cap at time 0, which I have it. And there is a negative sign here. So it becomes plus R2 over R1 plus R2 Vm. All right, um, so what is happening now? Well, this shows that uh, voltage of cap is increasing, of course. So the moment we are at, uh, starting at time zero, when V1 is fixed and flat at negative Vm, uh, voltage at V2 is increasing, so is going up. Is going up. And the slope of increase alpha is matching Vm over Rc times t, alpha t, just a line. Now, uh, we know that V out is negative V2, so obviously V out is uh, with the negative slope is decreasing at the same time. So whatever alpha is, we have negative alpha, negative Vm over Rc. This goes on up to the moment that the amount that V2 is, or V out, uh, the, the value V out is negative such that it becomes less than this value, or basically the whole thing continues up to the point that uh, continues till Vc, which is increasing, or V2, which as you can see is increasing, it hits the threshold of R2 over R1 plus R2 Vm. At that point, V out, at that point, V out will hit the threshold of negative. Uh, and then as a result of that, we will have the switching happening. So all I'm trying to say is now if I substitute this value for Vc here, what I'm going to get is Vm over Rc t equal to, I have um, 2R2 R1 plus R2 Vm. So uh, as a result, this cancels out with this Vm, and what I get is t equal to 2RC, R2, divided by R1 plus R2. What is this time that I just found? This time is effectively uh, the duration of, let's say, um, this duration. The duration of the increase at V2 during V1 is negative, or the duration of decrease at V out which correspond to half period actually. So if you take a look at uh, the, this plot that is shown here, this plot, over here, this half period, uh, this half period, is what I'm talking about at the output. This is the time t that I just found. Uh, that output transition from the maximum value to the lowest value, which is half period of the whole triangle. So if I switch back, what I have is now the period for triangle is 2 times t, which is 4 times Rc, R2, divided by R1 plus R2 as was discussed. Okay, I hope that uh, this analysis and this example is helpful in terms of understanding how this uh, oscillator effectively that generates a triangle waveform or square waveform at the same time is working and how can we adjust the components in the circuit to set the value of period or frequency effectively because frequency obviously of oscillation is just one over period of oscillation. So uh, by setting this 
to the denominator, we can find the frequency of oscillation for this circuit as well. I hope that this is helpful.